Hi everyone, and this is how I convert this normal garage into my drift track. So this is when the carpet and the um, under layout I've got, which I'll show you in a minute, is just all stored away, so it's quite compact. So this is my garage, it's actually uh, the width I use is 3.4 metres across and the length that I'm actually using for the drift carpet is just over 6 metres, I think it's about 6.4 metres. So it's a nice sort of size, obviously I've got a washing machine and there's a little bit of a box there I have to go around. But this is the uh, workspace that I've got to deal with. Obviously, I have to put it down mainly at weekends or you know, just for the day for a couple of hours. It takes about 20 minutes to um, lay all this out. Obviously, it gets faster the more times you do it. Can't keep it down because obviously I park the car in here every single night. So, uh, but it's a good compromise and good practice ground. Right, from the garage floor, as you can see, it is sort of smooth, but it's actually quite rippled still. It's got obviously a, a textured effect. And obviously there's in the middle here is actually an expansion joint because obviously the garage is quite long um, so it does cause a bit of a bump now I did originally put just the carpet on top uh, which did it worked but it was still uh, you know not perfect so the solution I come up with is actually some hardboard uh, well sorry surface protection which they use for like wood and so on like if you're moving house or decorating and so on um, it's nice and easy to cut, it's cheap, it's uh, 2 meters, uh, 2.4 metres by 1.2 metres width. Uh, it's about £4 a sheet at the time I actually bought it. You see it's just like a corrugated plastic, um, so you lay them out. So I've actually got, um, I think it's 7 altogether. I think you think I bought 8 because there's a bit, obviously I had to extend on just to go to the other end of the garage door. Um, but putting that down makes makes it a lot smoother. Obviously, it's a little bit textured, but it's a lot better than just having the concrete floor. Here we are. That's all the uh, hardwood flooring uh, surface protection all laid out, which uh, gives it a, a better smooth finish. Obviously, use mask and tape just on some of the joints. You don't have to do the whole lot. I just do on the main joints, or especially if it bulges up a little bit. Always put it there, but apart from that, it gives it a lot better, smoother finish. The other thing I've used is some um, sticky Velcro, which also helps the felt just stick on top to put it tight. I will do some more along the edges, so it's uh, it does stay in place a lot better. But apart from that, that's the job. Right, for the carpet, it's actually not carpet, it's actually felt which is used for sub enclosures or um, anything for your car or camper van or so on. Uh, I got it from eBay, I actually bought 20 metres, it was 20 metres by 2 metres width uh, for about £120. Uh, you can get it in black or grey, obviously this is grey. Um, as you can see there, it's just a nice smooth felt, uh, works perfectly and obviously a lot cheaper than the proper drifting carpet you can get. Uh, as you can see it's all uh, rolled up at the moment and I'll get it rolled out and you can see what it looks like. Right, it's just a piece of uh, PVC uh, waste pipe which I use to uh, wrap the carpet around just so I can actually fold it away and store it. Okay then, as it's laid out, you can actually see where I've got my join there with the masking tape. The width of the felt is obviously two meters, which comes, you can just see a faint line going up there. That's because obviously the felt is overlapped. Um, it's just the way I've done it first of all, because it was uh, before I had the underlay. Um, I've just left it that way, it hasn't caused a problem. Um, so it's up to you if you actually want to keep it all nice level. Like I say, if you were keeping this permanently down and not having to fold it up then yes I would keep it nice and smooth and keep it nice and tall and if not glue it down 
but because obviously I've used it still for a garage and bring the car in, I obviously need to fold it away. So that's the carpet all laid out, all ready for the barriers. When you first lay it down though, don't worry too much if you do get some ripples. Um, that should smooth out, obviously smooth out best you can with your hands. But then once the car keeps going round and round, it'll actually uh, keep it nice and flat for you. So these are all the barriers that we've got to put on the walls now to get protection. You can see there's some of them got the foam pads on. I'll show you how I fix them onto the wall. On the one side of the garage, I've actually got it permanently fixed. It's on a bit of sticky Velcro, which you come away, but I just leave that there because it's not in the way on that side. But I'll show you how I fix it around the rest of it. Right, for the barriers, I've just used this uh, plastic, which is actually from the electrical conduit. This is the part that actually clips over the front. Uh, the good thing is about this, it's nice and cheap. Um, it's quite flexible, but obviously very strong as well. Uh, to fix it onto the walls, I tried a different uh, number of ways. First of all, I did use double-sided uh, sticky Velcro. It wasn't very good, so I actually changed it. So as well as foam pads help buffer the impact of the car hits it, I've also got these magnetic hatches. So they're all along the um, side. I've still got to get some more to do all of them. It makes it nice and easy, so you can just pull it all off. A whole lot because originally I did have it fix the wall and then try to put the carpet underneath which was a bit of a nightmare so now if you take it off you can lay the carpet down and then put it on afterwards so that's that the barrier as it goes round to the where the garage door is obviously it bends around nice and easy I actually separate it here but obviously where you have a join always put a bit of masking tape on because obviously it will stick out and the car will catch it and can damage your body shell or car. Um, as it goes round, I've actually got a bit of copper pipe in some foam legging as a barrier. And I've actually got a pipe clip on here to help it clip on. So obviously this is where I remove it so it's in storage. Um, go, going round by the uh, washing machine, I've actually got uh, some bungee cord here to help pull it tight so you get as much room and give a nice curve. Close it around there. Have a little hook here, just to help hold it in place. As well as obviously the foam, so the car does here, it's not a massive whack, it's got a bit of cushioning. This is my uh, tapping bell. This is just made out of a skewer, which we just drilled into the wall. So it's nice and easy. On a bit of uh, thread, so if it was to get tangled up, it would literally just snap. So won't hurt your car or damage your body shell. And just a little bell, which is actually um, stolen out of the Christmas decorations. Um, use straw as well, just to help so if the spoiler comes around, it doesn't get tangled up in the thread. So it literally just uh, bounce around. So that's uh, that. All right, for curbs, all I've done was use different uh, shapes of cardboard. So you can literally just lay it out as, as and where you want to. Um, good idea is obviously because the cars can run over it. Um, just a basic idea at the moment. I probably will obviously paint them and make them look a bit better. But that's nice and easy. Now the garage is transformed. Let's get on with some drifting. <laughs> 